but myself I crucify It can be 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 but myself I crucify What's that mean? Well, it means that you can choose to condemn yourself by condemning your brothers and sisters and have the associated uh, experience of feeling condemned, crucified, as Jesus calls it. Uh, I, it can be but myself, I crucify. No one's, there's no outside influences acting on us. We, we get to call the shots in our world, and we're going to learn that through our, our reading, our lesson today, and in our, in our associated text reading. It'll really get into that, talking about how that we're responsible for everything that happens to us. The, the world we see, the feelings we, we feel, the thoughts we think, they're all a result of what we value. Uh, Beliefs and desires form a bond that uh, makes the whole world we see. <laughs> well, I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks, here, here on lesson 196 out of the foundation. <laughs> hey, it just the horse is walking up. They're fine. It can be but myself I crucify. Anyway, uh, where was I at? Uh, we're in Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles uh, here on Sunday, July the 14th of 2024. It can be but myself I crucify. When this is firmly understood and kept in full awareness, you will not attempt to harm yourself, nor make your body slave to vengeance. You will not attack yourself, and you will realize that to attack another is but to attack yourself. Okay, catch that? Blame someone that seems to be different than you, and you are blaming you. Attack your, yourself by attacking your brother is not, not necessary, not helpful for your own peace of mind. You will be free of the insane belief. You will not attack yourself, and you will realize that to attack another is but to attack yourself. You will be free of the insane belief that to attack a brother saves yourself and you will understand his safety is your own, and in his healing, you are healed. Perhaps at first you will not understand how mercy, limitless and with all things held in its sure protection, can be found in the idea we practice for today. It may in fact appear to be a sign that punishment can never be escaped, because the ego under what it sees as threat is quick to cite the truth to save its lies. Yet must it fail to understand the truth it uses thus. But you can learn to see these foolish applications and deny the meaning they appear to have. Thus do you also teach your mind that you are not an ego. For the ways in which the ego would distort the truth will not deceive you longer. You will not believe you are a body to be crucified. And you will see within today's idea the light of resurrection looking past all thoughts of crucifixion and of death to thoughts of liberation and of life. <laughs> Today's idea is one step we take in leading us from bondage to the state of perfect freedom. Let us take this step today that we may quickly go the way salvation shows us, taking every step in its appointed sequence as the mind relinquishes its burdens one by one. It is not time we need for this. If it's not time we need for it, what is it? It is but willingness, is his next sentence. Willingness, that's all we need is willingness. For what would seem to need a thousand years can easily be done in just one instant by the grace of God, the miracle. 
the dreary, hopeless thought that you can make attacks on others and escape yourself has nailed you to the cross. Perhaps it seemed to be salvation, yet it merely stood for the belief the fear of God is real. And what is that but hell? Who could believe his father is his deadly enemy, separate, separate from him, and waiting to destroy his life and blot him from the universe without the fear of hell upon his heart. Such is the form of madness you believe. If you accept the fearful thought you can attack another and be free yourself. Such is the form of madness you believe if you accept the fearful thought you can attack another and be free yourself. Until this form is changed, there is no hope. Until you see that this at least must be entirely impossible, how could there be escape? The fear of God is real to anyone who thinks this thought is true, and he will not perceive its foolishness or even see that it is there, so that it would be possible to question it. To question it at all, its form must first be changed at least as much as will permit fear of retaliation to abate and the responsibility responsibility returned to some extent to you from there you can at least consider if you want to go along this painful path until this shift has been accomplished you cannot perceive that it is but your thoughts that bring you fear and your deliverance depends on you <laughs> you'll think it's being done to you until you realize that, no, no, I, I get to choose everything. I'm the responsible one here. Our next step will be easy if you take this one today. Okay, he says this is a foundational idea, that our next steps will be easy if we take this step today. Our next steps will be, our next steps will be easy if you take this one today. From there, we go ahead quite rapidly. For once you understand it is impossible that you be hurt, except by your own thoughts. That's why we want to take time to, to be still and quiet and watch our thoughts every day so we can decide if we like what we're believing and what we're thinking and what we're feeling, what we're valuing. For once you understand it is impossible that you be hurt except by your own thoughts, the fear of God must disappear. You cannot then believe that fear is caused without. In other words, you don't think that something outside you is bringing something fearful to you. The, the, the thought was in your mind first, and then something came to you that just was a pictorial representation of what you were already thinking, believing you have, live in a world that, that is not whole, not connected, not integrated with God's love. You cannot then believe that fear is caused without, and God, whom you had thought to banish, can be welcomed back within the holy mind he never left. <laughs> Salvation song can certainly be heard in the idea we practice for today. If it can but be you, you crucify, you did not hurt the world and need not fear its vengeance and pursuit. Nor need you hide in terror from the deadly fear of God projection hides behind. Uh, to project, you know, to blame someone else for your uncomfortable feeling. The thing you dread the most is your salvation. Oh my. You are strong and it is strength you want. And you are free and glad of freedom. You have sought to be both weak and bound because you feared your strength and freedom, yet salvation lies in them. There is an instant in which terror seems to grip your mind so wholly that escape appears quite hopeless. When you realize once and for all that it is you you fear, the mind perceives itself as your mind the mind perceives itself as split. Okay, so what he's saying is that there's a moment when you feel like uh, terror is overwhelming you. But it's at that moment we need to not respond to what's outside, but go inside and say, okay, what? why did I cause this? What's my part to play? How can I let it go? How can I be saved from this in my mind? 
There is an instant in which terror seems to grip your mind so wholly that escape appears quite hopeless. When you realize once and for all that it is you you fear, the mind perceives itself as split, and this had been concealed while you believed attack could be directed outward and returned from outside to within. It seemed to be an enemy outside you had to fear, and thus a god outside yourself became your mortal enemy, the source of fear. 11. Now for an instant is a murderer perceived within you, eager for your death, intent on plotting punishment for you until the time when it can kill at last. Yet in this instant is the time as well in which salvation comes, for fear of God has disappeared, and you can call on him to save you from illusions by his love, calling him father and yourself his son. Pray that the instant may be soon, today. Step back from fear and make advance to love. There is no thought of God that does not go with you to help you reach that instant and to go beyond it quickly, surely, and forever. When the fear of God is gone, there are no obstacles that still remain between you and the holy peace of God. How kind and merciful is the idea we practice. Give it welcome as you should, for it is your release. It is indeed but you your mind can try to crucify, yet your redemption too will come from you. It can be but myself I crucify. And, and see how he, he relates that to the fear of God, uh, which is maybe a little bit beyond our present understanding. But let's just trust that we're going to quit blaming outside ourselves for our uncomfortable feeling. We're going to start looking inside. That's why we want to take those two five-minute practice periods, morning and evening. As soon as you can when you wake up and close to the time you go to bed, kind of set your night for, the, for a, a peaceful night so that you can have good thoughts in your mind. Wake up strong and invigorated and happy. And also when you wake up in the morning, try to take that first five minutes if possible. You might have to get up and go... Uh, use the bathroom, but when you come back, sit down, sit in that upright position if possible, close your eyes, and tell yourself, it can be but myself I crucify, and then be still and let your thoughts be quiet. And then throughout the day, every hour of the day, remind yourself today, I, it can be but myself I crucify. Quit that blaming others. <laughs> We've outgrown that, haven't we? Okay, now let's go look, and we're going to read something just similar. We're only going to read half of this section in chapter 21, The re Reason and Perception, section 2, The Responsibility for Sight. Okay, The Responsibility for Sight, before you go there, or as you're turning there. It, today, it's uh, Barn Day. Found this on Holidays and Observances. Bas Bastille Day, which is the, uh, the storming of the Bastille uh, in uh, Paris, France, in 1789, which began the French Revolution. International Nude Day. <laughs> Grand Marnia Day, which is a citrus-flavored liqueur. Macaroni and Cheese Day. Tape Measure Day. I, mean, I use tape measure a lot in my world. Measuring logs, uh, measuring boards. Uh, pandemonium Day. Take a break from the routine and, and be spontaneous today. <laughs> uh, shark Awareness. I just learned about the bull sharks, which are both a, a saltwater, they're, they, they're originally Gulf Mexico shark, salt saltwater shark, but they can go all the way up the Mississippi River. They've been found all the way up into Missouri and uh, Illinois. So they can live in freshwater too. Uh, they can get up to 700 pounds and 11 feet long. Uh, let's see. Shark awareness. Uh, victims of the nice France attack day. And that happened in, in 2016 where 86 people were killed by a, a driver who drove a truck into a crowd. Over 400 were injured. Uh, let's see. And, it's, and I think that... And then we're going to take a look at the uh, out of edible landscaping, the improved Meyer lemon. Now, if you live in my section of the woods, you'd have to grow it in a pot and bring it in in the wintertime, but you, it says it, it's good for that. Improved Meyer lemon blooms early, usually fruiting the first year, 
hardy to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So you wouldn't have to bring it in and the frost, uh, <laughs> if you missed it, it's not going to kill it, is what it's saying. The first initial frost of the winter. Uh, 18 degrees Fahrenheit, that's pretty cold. Uh, probably lose its leaves though. Ornamental, slightly sweet with an excellent lemon flavor. The peel is yellowish orange and very juicy. Juicy, A lovely container plant that will produce well in a pot. For planting outside in marginal citrus zone like 8B, choose the Meyer lemon grafted on a trifoliate orange. For pots, choose macrophylla or rooted on its own rootstock. Zones 8B to 10 is the uh, improved Meyer lemon, a citrus limonia. Okay, now let's go take a look in our reading. And be sure, keep in mind, with, in a, particularly in our reading today, it can be but myself I crucify. We have repeated how little is it is asked. Oh, the responsibility for sight, section 2 of chapter 21. We have repeated how little is asked of you to learn this course. It is the same small willingness you need to have your whole relationship transformed to joy. The little gift you offer to the Holy Spirit for which, for which he gives you everything. The very little on which salvation rests. The tiny change of mind by which the crucifixion is changed to resurrection. And being true, it is so simple that it cannot fail to be completely understood. Rejected, yes, but not ambiguous. Uh, not hard to understand, not more than one meaning. And if you choose again it now, and if you choose against it now, it will not be because it is obscure, but rather that this little cost seemed in your judgment to be too much to pay for peace. Okay, so he's saying that we're gonna, we can have peace as a result of, of the things that we're learning, but we have to value peace more than the judgments we're making. This is the, paragraph two, this is the only thing that you need do for vision, happiness, release from pain, and the complete escape from sin, all to be given you. Say only this, but mean it with no reservation, for here the power of salvation lies. Here's what we're to say. I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience, and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. And we'll include that in our song at the end. Again, let's say it again. He said, let's read that whole paragraph again. This is the only thing that you need do for vision, happiness, release from pain, and the complete escape from sin, all to be given you. Say only this, but mean it with no reservations, for here the power of salvation lies. I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience, and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. Deceive yourself no longer that you are helpless in the face of what is done to you. Acknowledge but that you have been mistaken, and all effects of your mistakes will disappear. Three. It is impossible the Son of God be merely driven by events outside of him. It is impossible that happenings that come to him were not his choice. His power of decision is the determiner of every situation in which he seems to find himself by chance or accident. No accident nor chance is possible within the universe as God created it, outside of which is nothing. <laughs> Suffer, and you decided sin was your goal. Be happy, and you gave the power of decision to him who must decide for God for you, the Holy Spirit. This is the little gift you offer to the Holy Spirit, and even this he gives you to give yourself. For by this gift is given you the power to release your Savior, that he may give salvation unto you. For begrudge not then this little offering, of giving your, uh, your will to the Holy Spirit. That's how I like to think of it. And, hey, what, how I need to look at this Holy Spirit when something comes up that's making you feel like you want to blame? 
say, okay, I need, I know, I'm the one who got to choose this. Holy Spirit, lighten up my mind so I can see what thoughts to think, what feelings to feel now that, that keeps and maintains my sanity. Paragraph four, begrudge not then this little offering. Withhold it and you keep the world as now you see it. Give it away and everything you see goes with it. Never was so much given for so little. In the holy instant is this exchange effected and maintained. Here is the world you do not want brought to the one you do. And here the one you do is given you because you want it. Yet for this the power of your wanting must first be recognized. You must accept its strength and not its weakness. You must perceive that what is strong enough to make a world can let it go and can accept correction if it is willing to see that it was wrong. Can we do that? Accept that we were made a mistake? Paragraph five. The world you see is but the idle witness that you were right. This witness is insane. You trained it in its testimony, and as it gave it back to you, you listened and convinced yourself that what it saw was true. You did this to yourself. See only this, and you will also see how circular the reasoning on which your seeing rests. This was not given you. This was your gift to you and to your brother. Be willing then to have it taken from him and be replaced with truth. And as you look upon the change in him, it will be given you to see it in yourself. So when you take that blame back from your brother and you say, well, okay, they, they didn't really do anything. I'm the one that initiated everything that happens in my world. So I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to give me vision, a, a vision of holiness, the vision of the eyes of Christ, a happy world. Paragraph six, perhaps you do not see the need for you to give this little offering. Look closer then at what it is and very simply see in it the whole exchange of separation for salvation. All that the ego is, is an idea that it is possible that things could happen to the son of God without his will and thus without the will of his creator. Well, that sure speaks of our lesson today. It can be but myself I crucify. Again, I'm going to read that sentence. All that the ego is, is an idea that it is possible that things could happen to the Son of God without his will, and thus without the will of his Creator, whose will cannot be separate from his own. This is the Son of God's replacement for his will, a mad revolt against what must forever be. This is the statement that he has the power to make God powerless and so to take it for himself and leave himself without what God has willed for him, which is happiness. This is the mad idea you have enshrined upon your altars and which you worship. And anything that threatens this seems to attack your faith, for here is it invested. Think not that you are faithless, for your belief and trust in this is strong indeed. Paragraph 7. The Holy Spirit can give you faith and holiness and vision to see it easily enough, but you have not left open and unoccupied the altar where the gifts belong. Where they should be, you have set up your idols to something else. This other, in quotes, will, which seems to tell you what must happen, you give reality. And what would show you otherwise must therefore seem unreal. All that is asked of you is to make room for truth. All that is asked of you is to make room for truth. You are not asked to make or do what lies beyond your understanding. All you are asked to do is let it in, only to stop your interference with what will happen of itself, simply to recognize again the presence of what you thought you gave away. In paragraph 8, which I think we'll stop on this paragraph today, about halfway through this section. Be willing for an instant to leave your altars free of what you placed upon them and what is really there you cannot fail to see. The holy instant is not an instant of creation, but of recognition. For recognition comes a vision and suspended judgment. Can we have the vision of the eyes of Christ, the forgiven world? and suspend our judgment, our blame of our brothers, then only it is possible to look within and see what must be there, plainly in sight and wholly independent 
of inference and judgment. Undoing is not your task, but it is up to you to welcome it or not. So the Holy Spirit will do the undoing. You just need to welcome him to do the undoing. Faith and desire go hand in hand, for everyone believes in what he wants. <laughs> okay, well, let's close with our song. And I think we've, we've, we've really hit on this really well today, this idea that uh, it can be but myself I crucify. Let's make sure I get this song, and I will. Let's let's do the, the 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 song we we had sang this back when I want the peace of God review lesson two oh five. Uh, I am responsible for what all what I. Uh, let's make sure I got this right. Let's see if I can make sure I get my song right. Okay, remember that song we did. I want the peace of God. And then we went on to our text. Mm -hmm. I am responsible for what? I see, I choose the feelings I experience, and I decide on the goal I would achieve, and everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I had asked mm -hmm. I want the peace of God I am responsible for what I see I choose the feelings I experience And I decide on the goals I would achieve And everything that seems to happen to me I ask for and receive as I had asked Okay, now let's, let, let's close with our song. And our word we're going to close with for peace today will be out of French, which is pay, spelled P-A-I-X. <laughs> it can be but myself I crucify 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 Take that with you today and Think about it every time you feel that little stab of pain to judge someone, to blame someone for your unhappiness. Ask the Holy Spirit for help to see through the eyes of Christ, the forgiven world, so that you don't crucify yourself by blame. It can be but myself I crucify. Pay. <laughs>